Uh, a tank translated is a four channel piece, uh, which means that there's four, uh, four videos running at the same time. And uh, the videos um, are of the crew members of the tank. So there's four of them. There's a, a driver, a gunner, a commander, uh, and a loader. And um, they appear in the space uh, in a kind of uh, configuration that uh, resembles how, what, what their positions are inside the tank. Um, so there's somewhat of a spatial uh, dimension to the work, uh, but essentially what it is is uh, four talking heads. A lot of the conversation, and most particularly with the, the commander, uh, went around what it is that you actually see when you look outside, uh, and inevitably their descriptions of what they're able to see are always going to be, in some respects, filtered by, compromised by, affected by the way that the tank uh, um, uh, controls or um, impacts uh, their vision. The way that the tank affects biology, for example, and perception is something that I think is lightly addressed in the work. Uh, uh, and, and, and of course the work presents a kind of a reverse of that because it gives you the configuration of the people sitting inside the tank without all the, without all the, all the shell, without all that uh, armor without all the bullshit and the noise and the oil and whatnot. So it kind of strips the tank in order to give you an idea about who these people are inside. But then, of course, the work also subverts that notion of stripping and revealing because the subtitles uh, are, are uh, manipulated. The subtitles change as they speak. As they talk, as the subtitles appear, uh, certain words uh, change. Uh, um, and I was trying to make subtitles uh, that people could read, but they would have to read very quickly. And so there's, I think, in the reader, uh, this feeling that you have to be quick, uh, that the reality or the translation uh, will change very quickly, uh, that the context will change. And indeed it does, it shifts from inside a tank into uh, something that may have been more related to their civilian life. Uh, I tried to find words that were very uh, similar in appearance so that the subtitle itself as a visual element uh, doesn't change. So you don't have this kind of uh, quick contraction or expansion of text which is very, very disruptive. Uh, ideally the words would be so similar, you know, they would have exactly the same number of letters and the same spacing uh, that you don't even notice it visually. And so it's almost like a, a twitch or a kind of a, a flicker of the eye uh, and you're not exactly sure what context you're in anymore. You know, it shifts from, from, uh, from being, uh, I think in one case, from being uh, talking about uh, the thrill of, of, of shooting uh, out of the tank for the first time to uh, the thrill of uh, being in a band, uh, I think was something that the, uh, the loader, who was a little bit more of a sort of a, uh, a macho character, was describing to me. Um, and this is something that happens very often in my work. Uh, in other words, in the desire to portray the real, in the encounter of the real, there's uh, a lot of layers that are, are, um, uh, come, come to bear on, on, the, on the act of showing, on the act of translation, on the act of making a piece. And so I'm interested in, 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 in adding things uh, to the story. And in adding them, I want to make that always transparent to the viewer to some degree. Uh, to people seeing or hearing the work. I, I like to be able to uh, tell a few stories at the same time. And one of them could be the story of, for example, these, these guys inside the tank and what they do. Uh, but then immediately there's another story that's being told and that is a story about perhaps the encounter or the conversation or the reaction of uh, my reaction to them. Uh, and then in this particular case, a kind of way that their words are easily substituted, easily changed into uh, a, a, another context that is perhaps uh, more attractive or more banal or more um, uh, or different or escapist or a kind of a desire to suppress, a desire to change. And these kinds of, uh, these kinds of manipulations and these kinds of uh, modes, uh, for me, a work is successful when they, when they have a way of coexisting. It's a way of sort of avoiding a, a kind of uh, an oppositional structure where, you know, there's, there's the truth and then there's you. Uh, it's trying to float a number of possibilities about how stories can uh, become, uh, how they have sort of different, kind of different modalities, different, different ways of, of, of being read and, uh, and putting that together and having it hold together is, is I guess, the, the, the kind of main challenge that I have. With uh, the Chutu Bochap, for example, there is this notion of 
memory that's being uh, played with in the piece, uh, where to understand what's happening in one scene, uh, you need to have seen um, the scene beforehand, uh, and they keep building on each other, but they never sort of resolve. There is not a, this linear structure. There is instead a, uh, a circular structure. Um, and I think that that kind of dependence, but a, a, a sort of a lack of resolution, but nevertheless a, a, this kind of interdependence of the parts is similar maybe in what, what is happening in, in the time translated, where you need uh, the context of one story um, in order to, by, by shifting the words in, in one story, you arrive at, at another story. And what I'm asking the viewer then to do is to actually suspend uh, these two stories simultaneous, simultaneously in, in, in their minds and to, to uh, consider the way that this, that, that this uh, simultaneity is, is, is possible in a sense. And I think with the Chota Bolchap, you do have uh, this notion that there is a simultaneous thing that's happening in all these rooms, uh, but uh, that kind of temporal sense of when what happened and what what causes what is 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 more open. Um, you just know that they're, they they need each other in order to make sense, but they're they'll, they'll never resolve. They'll they'll never finish. The piece talks begins with it never begins actually. It 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 has uh, the story uh, that an old woman tells that involves diamonds uh, that uh, the family her family was able to get uh, when a stranger knocked on the door and was was chased out and, and left the diamonds. And in, in fearing to, of losing the diamonds, the, her father swallows them. And so she recalls this, this, this uh, moment of uh, seeing her father, this kind of primal moment, primal scene of seeing her father, uh, hearing her father, rather, in the toilet afterwards, uh, excreting the diamonds and the mother is standing next to him groaning and, and uh, in, in this kind of ecstasy of saying how, how beautiful it is and uh, the recollection sort of activates a series of, of, of scenes or for me at least it's right in the middle of, of a couple of scenes uh, that then involve what happens to these diamonds and the neighbors listening in and this woman dying and eventually the apartment being rented to someone who appears suspicious to the neighbors and as the neighbors suspect that they hear this person planning something that might be uh, dangerous, uh, somehow time shifts back and the woman is back in her apartment and she's recalling this memory again. And I think that in a sense of bringing together perhaps a trauma and ecstasy, uh, uh, the work tries to, again, to suspend those two, bring them together, uh, but to, to, to pull away this notion that, 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 that you can resolve it. And I think in that sense, um, Probably it's it's uh, somewhat more psychological than than what's happening in the tra uh, tank translated. Part of the look of the work is to make it familiar, and I think that there's quite enough things that are happening in the work that are maybe somewhat strange or that need a little bit that are confusing. And so uh, one of the ways that I try to bring people in is by by showing things that seem familiar at, uh, and using these kinds of genres and the c conventions and sometimes cliches in order to. Uh, disarm people or to kind of make them feel that they sort of get it uh, only at some point to be able to complicate it or to to include something else in the storytelling and I like these genres I, I, I like them I think that using a genre is like putting on a pair of really nice comfortable shoes or you know putting something on that you that you like you like to wear and then it's a question of what what goes along with it and so uh, it's 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 a it's also a piece of appropriation in a sense, and there's always fun in appropriating because it's a game of masks. It's a game of uh, you know you're 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 not again you're moving away from a particular truth, but uh, you're moving into something that has its own language. And at some point, uh, using that perhaps suppresses the kind of truth outside, but creates a, a kind of an aesthetic uh, uh, aesthetic opens up a window where, where pleasure is possible, where um, a particular memory is activated when you remember seeing these kinds of shows when you, you're watching TV at some point. Uh, I like to do that. <laughs>